Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, what happened when someone's love for another turned into a dangerous obsession? An obsession from beyond the grave. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown, and quite possibly, the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. And it is 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. You can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You want to support the show? Keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person, an EPP as we call that. All you have to do is go to ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to sign up to be an extra podcast person. Get access to all of our 300 some bonus episodes. You also get access to our ebook and our audio book, both uh, Amazon bestsellers. You can uh, binge away and all that. You also get, uh, what's, what else do they get, Jenny? Tell them, tell them more of what they get. Well, like, access I, to all of our previous episodes. Did you already? Yes, the uh, the previous episodes. Yeah. Uh, the ad, the it's all commercial free. Mm-hmm. Advanced episodes of the show that are commercial free. So lots of stuff. Um, and a kitten. So no kittens comes in the mail. It's like grow <laughs> a kitten. You just add water and boom, kitten. I don't so. think I'd put. A kitten in the mail right now. No, there's no kittens that you get, but you get everything else. So uh, check it out, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to sign up and keep our show on the air. Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you once again. Hi. And how are you this fine day? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I, uh, I, I uh, we have a lot of interesting things uh, to share from our, our ghost stories that have been written in today. We have uh, some interesting finds over the weekend uh, at an antique store uh, mm-hmm. that I got. We have uh, our, our picture that is uh, your picture that is now here. It is home. The picture has made it home. Yes. Do you do you want to tell the final chapter that at least we think it may be the final chapter in the picture story? Well, I thought we did. Did we share about my mom finding it? Yeah, and now it's here. And now it's here. And now it's here. So, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, it is kind of, uh, it, it's there. And then Amityville windows, uh, I found those. I'm very excited about that. Um, I hate to burst your bubble, but I'm pretty sure those are not old. Really? No. Go grab one. You go grab one. I'll go one. grab one. Okay. Because you sing the, re- a song. the reason I think they're not old is because they're making a lot of window frames now where they don't have glass in them. And so a lot of them they make are church windows, but they're using old wood. But I just don't think it's actually an original eye window. Yeah. Am I right? It's a pretty good reproduction, though. Yeah, it's a very good reproduction, and I am totally fine. When I saw you buying those, I was like, oh, cool, eye windows that don't have a story. Great. So, yeah, because they don't look like they would have had glass in them at one time. No. But, but it is old wood, I believe, but just kind of repurposed into be yeah. somebody like me who would appreciate buying an Amityville window. Yep, so but, I'm I'm happy you found your eye windows without them being from a haunted house. Had they been in an old house, would you have said, no, we're not getting those? Had they been in an old house, they would have been a lot more than what they were. So that's why I would just let you go with it. (laughs) (laughs) I I just knew that, um, yeah, that was that those are like the right now. If you go to any craft fair, Mm -hmm. you know, some of the craft malls, they have the church church window. I've seen that. I'd never seen the Amityville window style. I have. And um, I don't see them very often, but. So there goes one of the Christmas presents I was going to get you, but that's okay. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Did, had you already spotted that at the store? Oh, yeah, because oh. I'm in that store weekly. <laughs> okay. And so I was thinking, wow, if I can, you know, I wonder if I can get them and hold them or have them hold them. Or hide them. Hide them. In the attic. Oh, that'd be so funny if you went up in the attic for something and there's these random eye windows and you're like, oh, my God, where do these come from? These are amazing. <laughs> Hidden underneath a bunch of... Uh, <laughs> insulation <laughs> with a weird note attached. You could have totally had me. You could have totally done that. You could be like, hey, can you go up in the... I've been hearing this tapping sound coming from this corner and it's way over there underneath all the insulation. Can you go check on that? 
I would have done that. And what would you have done then? And I would have found those. So I want to know about your railroad lights that you have yeah. never had an interest in railroad lights before, but mm-hmm. all of a sudden you found one and you had to have it. Well, I've, I've always seen these railroad lights and I've seen like the, the glass pieces, mm-hmm. but very rarely have I seen them completely in the, the steel case or the okay. metal case. And I've always liked railroad stuff. Mm-hmm. I've always liked railroad cross before Titanic. It was trains for yeah. me that I, so about, well, it was for me too, about a year and a half of my life was trains. And that was straight up Titanic at about, uh, you know, second grade. Yeah. So, um, I just saw it and it was intact and I thought, Hey, I can, it, it's for like a gas lantern to uh, put in gas and it's still in good shape to do that. But I'm just, I ordered some, uh, led, uh, like lights to put in there that I can turn on and off and going to hang it somewhere. That is very cool. Then I'm going to start collecting, uh, little trains and have a train set that runs around this office in different places. I and- just had to ask because you've never, I mean, other than the railroad mm-hmm. crossing sign and you took it apart. So you just had the crossing sign, which mm-hmm. is kind of, you know, significant with people crossing over. Mm-hmm. I have not seen you ever look at a railroad light. So that's why I was curious. I was like, Ooh, I wonder why that's calling to him. I just, I've never seen one like that, I guess. Cause things call to people. I've seen it in parts, but I've never seen it all intact like that. And I thought, this is just a cool piece in still really good shape. And it's really old. And I'm just, I always like to imagine, you know, where those things had been, what they've seen, the storms they've been through, just mm-hmm. everything, you know, everything that that thing has, has seen. And I thought that's, that would make a cool addition to the office. And I've been trying to add more things into here that are creepy and old. It's going to look like the Warren's Museum at some point without, um, without really haunted objects. That'll be good that they're not haunted. Yeah, but it's just going to be, you know, the the room of creepiness and, and oddities. I also got a metal detector this weekend, too. So <laughs> I, mean, I can't wait to see the treasures you find. I can go find shit in the yard. So to hang on the wall, find <laughs> shit in the yard to hang on the wall. Uh, so, yeah, so that's, uh, that's that's the excitement of us uh, finding, you know, old creepy decor. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us let's go over to our first story it says my friend rosa is from mexico she's been in the u.s for over half of her life this is her ghost story in mexico rosa had an obsessed boyfriend he loved her too much she says at first she was in love with him but he started to become controlling and jealous he wanted her to stay inside the house and never go out just be there for him and wait for him to get home when he talked about moving away from the city to a house in the country she knew it was time to break up with him. He did not take it well at all. His family hated Rosa. And after the breakup, because he was so depressed, his family blamed her. She had to walk past his sister's house on her way to work. And sometimes his sister would yell mean things to Rosa in front of everyone. The obsessed now ex-boyfriend worked at a car wash in the city. One night he was closing. And when he turned off the main electrical switch, he was standing in a puddle of water and was probably wet. He was violently electrocuted and thrown over 10 feet away. They could not even touch his body for a few hours, and it was a horrible scene that the whole city heard about. Some people speculated on the idea that it was a suicide. Nobody knows why he turned off the main switch, but Rosa said they did turn it off occasionally for different reasons. Not long after that, Rosa left that city in Mexico. She felt like he was haunting her in her dreams. She said she would dream about him all the time, but it felt like he came to her in her dreams. It was not like he was in her dreams, but more like he came into them on his own. She felt stalked still, even after his death. A year went by and she was in the U.S. now. She had a new boyfriend and life had moved on. The dreams became less frequent, but still haunted her some nights. One night, she was at a birthday party and everyone got drunk, herself included. There was a mariachi band and it was one of the biggest parties she had been to ever. It was the backyard of an excessively big house. She did not know the host personally and had never been inside that house before. Near the end of the night, things had settled down. All the kids had gone to bed and the crowd had dwindled. Friends tell her they saw her walking and talking to herself. They said she looked crazy, like she was holding someone's hand and sometimes holding an imaginary person around their waist. 
They assumed she was drunk and she was safe there in that backyard just walking around. She said she remembers that night walking with her ex-boyfriend, the one who died in Mexico. She said he seemed so real, so nice, and so happy that night. They walked around and then she remembers walking with him into the back door of the big house. He led her and pulled her nicely by her hand and told her, let's go lie down. He took her to the laundry room and on the floor beside the washing machine was a small pile of laundry. She lay down and felt so tired. Then she said she knelt over her and put her put his hand over her mouth and nose. With an incredibly happy and smiling face, he leaned close to her nose and said, just relax. He told her to come to be with him. She felt like she could not breathe. He kept telling her to just relax and come be with him while holding his hand tightly over her mouth and nose. Her friends found her in the laundry room, squeezed between the wall and the washing machine. Her body looked like someone had laid her there and they could only see her from about her belly down. There's no way she could just casually lie herself down in that position. Luckily, someone saw her go into the back door and they said she was holding one hand up, still looking as if she was holding hands with someone invisible, an imaginary friend, if you will. When she did not come out right away, they went in looking for her. They looked in the bathroom first and then started to worry. They told her it was less than five minutes, but when they were walking her outside, they noticed her lips were a bit blue. She said she had the worst hangover of her life the next day. A few weeks after that party, her ex came to her in a dream again. Her dream was like this. She's in her bed sleeping and her new boyfriend is there sleeping beside her. She feels someone sitting on the edge of the bed, almost touching her. She feels the bed being pressed down and since these dreams have been going on now for over a year, she knows exactly what to expect and it's always scary. In her dream, she opens her eyes and sees her ex-boyfriend sitting there holding a baby. He's just looking at the baby, smiling. He looks at her and says, it's a beautiful baby in Spanish, of course. He then gets up and walks out the door. She could not tell if he still had the baby in his arms or not because his back was to her as he walked out the door. She said this time, the dream seemed so real and she did not feel fear like other nights. She never dreamed of him again after that. She missed her period that month and found out she was pregnant. She had her first baby and he was a beautiful baby. So he tried to end up turning to, into a good ghost at the end? I guess kind of uh, coming in at the end saying, oh, you have a beautiful child. And then he goes, and it's mine. You know, no. The dad. No. I, I got more of a, you know, if you're going to live, I'm glad that you're going to have a beautiful baby. It's like he kind of finally moved on and got past the super crazy, jealous, hormonal mm -hmm. young guy stage. Maybe. And maybe, you know, found some peace or wanted, it realized it was better for her to be at peace and not to continue to terrorize her mm -hmm. with his love. Yeah. That's <laughs> so, not love. When no, it's like that. no, it's not. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the fact that it stopped is interesting. The fact that it came to that conclusion is interesting. Mm -hmm. I was expecting something much darker. What? I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, he almost killed her once. So, yeah. um, and the way that the story was being told from the perspective of a friend, um, where there was a lot of was and she was and this and that. And I was wondering, are we speaking in the past per, mm -hmm. you know, tense because she's dead or, yeah. um, but no, it turned out not. Yeah. So happy ending. This is where we need some full house music. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad it ended the way it, it did. And that he stopped coming to bother her yeah creepy story and i think that is i have not heard one like that where it's mm -mm. quite that order of events and in that sequence of everything happening the way it did no so good story thank you for sharing that with us our phone number is 855-853-4802 here at real ghost stories online uh we haven't uh, introduced our friend i don't i think i think I, we posted a photo or i one of us I posted, posted a photo. about him we have a new uh, furry friend here in the studio with us uh, today. And I'm sure he'll be with us many a times, too. We now have a third dog. Yeah. And his name is Buddy. He came with the name. He's three years old. Mm -hmm. And he's a Border Collie. Would you like to share the story of Buddy? You can if you want. Go ahead. Well, I get up usually early and I spend a little bit of time flipping through Craigslist looking at farm stuff. Stalking animals that need homes no 
looking for things that we can use on the farm for a cheaper price than buying them at mm -hmm. the store right now. And I saw this dog and it looked like a purebred border collie, which he's unregistered. So maybe he is, maybe he isn't. and doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, they said, you know, they had just moved into town from their farm and that he wasn't adjusting well to not being on a farm with other animals and everything. And so I thought, well, I want to go see him, you know, and I, cause I ask, I always ask, you know, why are you rehoming? And I know that that's probably a little bit forward, but I, I want to know. You should know. Yeah. yeah. I want to know, is it because it's trying to eat your child's face or because you don't like the dog or because you're allergic? You know, I think yeah. it's a fair enough question. Yeah. And um, anyway, I described, you know, our farm a little bit and said, you know, I grew up with border collies and always wanted another one. And you've had a hashtag uh, uh, campaign going on for <laughs> months now saying but Jenny I, needs I a border collie. The, well, and, and we had Lena for a little while, but Lena was sick. Mm -hmm. She was born with an immune deficiency to where she just never got over her last illness. Mm -hmm. So um, that took a while to get over. So I, I felt like it was time that we could do the, you know, search for a border collie again. And so anyway... I messaged the owner and come to find out they had moved to our tiny town. You mm -hmm. know, they were about five minutes away and we went there and he just came up and shook paws like <laughs> literally. Hi, I'm buddy. Nice to meet you. <laughs> he literally came up, lifted his paw. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I mean, he can do tricks and stuff, which is great, yeah. but I'm more concerned about his temperament. Is he going to chase cars? Cause I've had one that used to chase cars and that was at that did not go well when she broke her paw that way. Um, you know, will he terrorize our chickens or our animals? And he had been on a farm where they had, what, 200 hens mm -hmm. and a, a bunch of cattle. So he seemed to tick all the boxes, you know, and I wanted one that was not a baby baby because mm -hmm. I don't do well with baby children, let alone baby animals. <laughs> you know, if I can't put it in the barn when it's crying. Yeah. You know, mama needs a break. Anyway, so he checked all the boxes and I and I made sure that I said, OK, if this doesn't work out for some reason, can we mm -hmm. bring him back to you um, to, you know, for you to, to find a new home for him? And they said, yeah, that that's what they wanted. So I could tell they really had his best interest at heart and um, and they wouldn't accept a rehoming fee. They just yeah. wanted him to go to a good farm and. She said that they had turned down some other people that, you know, wanted him as a backyard dog or whatever. And they just, you know, one, once you've had a border collie, you just kind of always want one. But they are different in that you kind of have to know their, their temperament. And they're not for everybody. Mm -hmm. But he seems so calm and so at peace. And, and he's calming to me. So... Mm -hmm. That's why he follows me around the farm everywhere I go. And Jenny came to the woman who had the dog in a dream saying, I'd like your dog. No. And then that's how she knew this is the house. Why do you always do that? You <laughs> take a good story and then you make it weird. <laughs> so anyway, they let us have him. And so far it's been great. And um, he gets along great with Bear and Sting. Mm -hmm. And. I think he's going to be here and be happy for the rest of his days. Yeah, I do too. I, I have yet to hear him bark. Has he barked yet? No, but no. I'm sure he will if he needed to. Yeah, I'm just curious what it sounds like. Just to, to prove that there's a dog in the studio and we're not like, <laughs> these are all fictitious pets. No. <laughs> but no, he's uh, no. A sweetheart. He's down there and he's uh, he's a great little dog. So you'll see pictures of him if you follow us on uh, on Instagram or anything like that. She's at Jenny Brewski. I'm at Tony Brewski. And of course, you can follow uh, the shows as well. 855-853-4802 uh, is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to our next one. It says, we were Americans living in Sicily because my dad was in the Navy and was stationed there. My mother was about 24 years old when she almost died after having her wisdom teeth pulled out at a Sicilian hospital. The infection was so serious that the priest was called to pray over her on the night that she says she died. She remembers the priest and seeing just four, uh, seeing me just four years old beside her hospital bed. Her face was so swollen that one of her eyes was swollen completely shut. She was not expected to live much longer. They had pulled all four wisdom teeth and she had a deadly infection. That night her grandmother came to her. She did not look like the 
voluptuous, Bavarian, white-haired, plainly dressed woman that she remembered as her grandmother, but somehow she knew for certain it was her. My mom said that her grandmother looked so beautiful, and the only way she can describe it is that she looked like Tinkerbell, like a little fairy made of light. Mom's told her hand, uh, hold her hands up to show me the size about eight inches tall. She and her grandmother, the little fairy, came to her bed and seemed happy and took my mom on a trip. They flew quickly like the speed of light, she says, vroom, and does a hand movement, like, well, you get the movement, like a rocket taking off of a race car. They flew out of the atmosphere and out into space, and the stars are whizzing by her head like vroom as she does more hand movements. She said it lasted just seconds, and she loved the trip with her grandmother, and she felt like she was part of this big, giant universe that worlds could not describe. Then her grandmother was leaving, and she told her not to go, but to please stay. She felt like it had just been seconds. It was not long enough. Then her grandmother told her four things. She said, time doesn't matter. You're going to be okay. Leave Mike. My dad is Mike, by the way. And someone better is waiting for you. Then she was gone. The next morning, my mom woke up and her condition had improved. Two or three days later, she received a telephone call. Back in 1977, it took a few days to get the call. And my mom had to go to a telephone to take the call at a scheduled time. It was a call from her family back in the U.S. Her grandmother had died in her own bed, peacefully surrounded by family that very night that my mom saw her as a fairy. My mom will tell me the this, this story to me, but she's not the kind of person to just tell a ghost story. She's a logical, skeptical type of person. She was an engineer and is as sane as anyone else's. That's why I believed her story. And that's where it ends. I want to know if she left Mike. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, at first I was honestly leaning towards the they must have given her some good drugs, you know, <laughs> Yeah. because we don't hear of loved ones coming back in different um, forms, sizes, like a, a fairy. Yeah. You know, that's a new one for us. But with the whole, you know, connection to the grandmother actually passing away at that time. You know, it, it makes sense. And I'm not trying to debunk, debunk the story. It just is very unlike any other stories that we've had. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those where it, it could sit there in the category of it could be paranormal. It might have just been this person's experience. Um, but the fact that the grandmother did pass that same time moves it into the world of that's paranormal. Mm -hmm. um, with other outside outside factors uh, yeah. playing in because if you don't have that I believe your story that you had that experience but un until there's other outside factors our minds can do amazing things and you know sometimes we think we're having a ghostly experience and we're not mm -hmm. um, but it is what it is um, it doesn't discount it as being a life changing moment or anything but this had that outside factor that played in that had some evidence to it that really strongly suggests and points yeah Grandma came yeah. and, and delivered that message. Thank you for sharing that uh, that story with us. We do greatly appreciate it. 855-853-4802 is our phone number. Let's go to a phone call. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, guys. Uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm Cody, and I'm currently calling from Carroll Stream, Illinois. So I want to tell you guys a story about my grandma who passed away about a year ago. But this happened about five years ago. The story here. Anyways. Sorry, I'm, I'm driving on my delivery, so if you guys hear background noise, I'm very sorry. But uh, anyways, back to the story. So my grandma was always a very religious person, uh, goes to church every Sunday, uh, had angel statues all over the house. You know, a, a grandma to me always sounds like that. Anyways, um, during the wintertime, uh, my grandma was by her basement stairs or by the door and the door was open and I think she was just looking down there and she ended up falling down all the way down the stairs and keep in mind there's no guardrail on the stairs so you know she just fell all the way straight down and thank god she didn't fall off to the side because there's no like I said no protection over there my grandpa's asleep at the time and uh he heard a big thud and he never wakes up which is always crazy but he actually woke up to a big thud he can barely even you can barely talk to him and he never really hear you. Anyways, he goes he goes near the stairs yelling, Martha, Martha, are you where are you? Are you okay? And uh, she was all the way down the stairs, already somehow pulled us managed to pull a cigarette out of her pocket and uh, and a lighter 
and just started puffing up a cigarette. She goes, yeah, uh, I got pushed down the stairs. And he goes, what? No one pushed you down the stairs. Are you crazy? And he was walking down the stairs. And uh, he's like, oh, I need to call 911. So and she's freaking out saying, someone pushed me down the stairs. You don't understand. Someone pushed me down the stairs. Uh, so the, yeah, he ended up calling 911. And they got there, and she was telling them all about how she got pushed down the stairs. And, of course, they questioned my grandpa, which any person, I mean, any, they have to at that point when she's saying she got pushed. He was denying it. She has dementia, like I said. I don't know if I said that, but <laughs> she has dementia. And uh, so that's what he was, he was playing it off like that. So uh, anyways, get to the hospital. We all end up showing up, me, my mom, my brother, my sister, and the rest of my family, like aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, slowly started to trickle in. So we're waiting to figure out what the hell's going on. And uh, so my uncle decided to take her phone and wanted to call her church to let them know, hey, uh, Martha's not going to be there for the next couple of Sundays. Uh, probably won't hear from her for a while. She fell on the stairs, and so he wanted to give her them a spiel. And uh, he was going through the contacts, and he saw there was a missed call in the call log. So he went to go check it, and it was actually her preacher at that church, the church leader. And there was a voicemail from him. So he decided to check it himself and started hearing some actual things that started to freak him out. And I looked at him like, yo, what's, what, what are you doing? As a 10-year-old, I was so confused. And uh, he goes, oh, guys, guys, shut up. I think there's a whole room. And he played the voicemail out loud. And uh, the preacher was saying something about Martha. Martha, this is a warning. There's a demonic presence coming to your home. I'm, I'm worried. I would like to come over and do a blessing. Please call me back. This is a very dangerous spirit. And that was just a couple of days earlier. And my grandma never checked her phone anyways, so it kind of doesn't surprise me that she never got that message. And uh, my grandpa, when, we, when he heard that, he freaked out, was saying, guys like she was telling me that someone pushed her down the stairs and he started to you know like this is crazy this this is nonsense no and he started being the denial we were kind of all shocked i as be a 10 year old i'm very confused but uh we didn't want to tell my grandma about it because then she'd start telling all the nurses yeah i got pushed down the stairs by a ghost can you believe it we didn't want her to think they well she was already kind of crazy but we didn't want them to think she was actually insane so um yeah, that, that story. So we never really know. Like, I mean, she would always fall. But, I mean, what are the what's the coincidence that she said she got pushed and her preacher told her, hey, you got to be careful. Some demons come to your house. You know what I mean? And it wasn't just like a random scam call. This was actually from his number. So that is really creepy to me. But uh, a, little, a little quick thing about her. So she said she'd always be able to talk to ghosts. And my dad passed away when I was 10, so back in 2012. Uh, so yeah, and she would always say she'd talk to him and let him know that I'm okay, and she would tell me that he loves me and stuff. So I, you know, now kind of looking back at it, maybe, like, because after, like, you know, knowing about this story, like, growing up later in life, being like, huh, well, maybe, maybe she actually did talk to him. You know, uh, they were really close. Uh, but this was my grandma and my mom's side, not my dad's side. But uh, they would always come over for Christmas Eve, and I'd always wake up at 10 o'clock at night to go get water. And I was like 13 years old at the time, and I always hear just talking by the sink to herself. I always like, wow, she's crazy. <clears throat> and slowly tiptoeing out of the room so she didn't see me. But uh, yeah, that's my story. Uh, my grandma, like I said, passed away this past year. So, you know wanting to really be able to talk to her about this. I mean, like, hey, you know, did you actually, you know, talk to my dad? Or she kind of just be like, you know, yeah, you know, your dad loves you. Make you feel better. But yeah, that's really my story. And I'd like to say thank you guys for listening to it. Hopefully you guys uh, can maybe clear up a little bit. Maybe did she get pushed? I mean, I know it's kind of hard to know, even from the aspect. It was hard to know from my shoes. I can only imagine trying to figure out the story from your shoes so uh thank you guys once again i really appreciate it but you guys stay safe thoughts 
I don't know. I mean, I would imagine that if there's a suspicion of a demonic presence in the home anyway, that, yeah, maybe she did get pushed. I just would like to know how um, the church leader knew that there was a demonic presence either in or heading toward her home. Mm -hmm. That part of the story is what, you know, is, is intriguing to me because that's not something you usually get a heads up on. That is a good question. We're kind of out of nowhere. He just has this knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like, was there something else? Was something exercised at another place? And it knew, he knew where it was going? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Where, what do you, what is your thoughts? How do you think that that occurred? That or something told him that that was happening. Her name was brought up or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe something pushed her. But as to why the priest knew or how he knew, that's... That I I don't think uh, we would know unless we talked to the priest. Yeah. But thank you for sharing that story with us. Very creepy. 855-853-4802, our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. And that is going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. And EPP, as we call them, sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to keep us on the air. Until next time, for Jenny and all of us at Real Ghost Stories Online, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.